welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. A couple of months ago my old friend Stu contacted me about a woodworking project. We've known each other for 20 years but until that moment I didn't know that Stu was a train driver. There's an old saying that states a man owes a debt to his profession and Stu's paying his debt by volunteering at the Kumamanaro Railway Museum. The museum runs a farmer's market on the second Sunday of every month so today we're going to build one of these display stands. The stand is just three simple wooden boxes supported on four legs. The boxes are tilted forwards at an angle and we'll also put a chalkboard at the back to write the prices on. Let's start by sawing some boards to make the sides of the boxes. I'll measure and mark out these boards in the usual way. Then I'll cut them to length with the tenon saw. The clients say they want their display stands left with a rough finish but I'm going to plane the splinters off the edges of the boards anyway. This one needs another pass. It's not practical to remove this kind of damage by planing, so I'll clean it up with my spoke shave instead. If you don't have a spoke shave, a chisel will do the job just as well. If your client wants a smooth, clean finish on their project, then you probably shouldn't use pallet wood. But if they insist, then it doesn't take too long to plane the faces of the boards as well as the edges. I've clamped these two boards to the end of the bench to make an alignment jig. This will make it much faster to set up pairs of boards to make each box half. Once the boards are in position, they can be quickly drilled and screwed together. I'm using my brace to drive the screws in here, because otherwise I'd have to keep swapping between the drill and the screwdriver bits. Now I can add this box half to the stack. I'll use this board and a couple of holdfasts to help with the next step. This setup will give me something to push against while I fit each pair of box halves together. The halves are then drilled and screwed together, the same way as before. Now we can turn the box around to drill and screw the final corner. These screws are recycled and some of them will need to be straightened before use. Luckily they're quite soft so a quick tap on the anvil will make them good again. Now we can mark out the box bases on this sheet of plywood. I'll sit the base on the plywood, check for squareness, then I'll just mark a pencil line around it. The edges of recycled pallet plywood are often cracked like this, so we need to cut the damaged parts off before we can use it. The handsaw leaves this rough edge on the plywood, so we'll sand it smooth before we attach it to the box. Now we can attach the base to the box. I might make that side the top. We'll start by applying a bead of glue all the way around the box. I can't find my piece of scrap plastic, so I'll just spread the glue with my finger this time. Now we can fit the base and nail it in position. I'm also using recycled nails here. It just seems appropriate for this project. Now we can start work on the legs. This timber was salvaged from a house renovation. It has very sharp corners and some plasterboard paper residue stuck to it, but they can be fixed with some quick planing. Planing down the corners also helps prevent them from splintering if they get bumped. Some of the wood box sides are taller than the others. This will often happen when you're using recycled wood. Once again, our wood plane will fix the problem. I'll set up these two holdfasts as a planing stop first. That feels much better. Now we can lay out the first pair of legs on the workbench. 
The legs attach to the sides of the boxes, so we need one front and one back leg. Make sure the legs are the same distance apart at both ends. Then make some marks on the bench to make it easier to align them next time. I'm going to use these holdfasts to keep the legs in position on the bench. Now we can measure and mark the box locations. Next we'll mark the box angles using our sliding bevel. The exact angle we use isn't important, it just needs to be the same for all three boxes. If your holdfasts are too short to reach the workpiece, you can bridge the gap with some scrap timber and then clamp down on the scrap instead. Now we can attach the box with three screws into each leg. I'll attach the other two boxes in the same way. Once all of the boxes are attached, we can lift the assembly off the bench, lay out the other pair of legs, position the assembly back on top of them, then attach the second set of legs with screws. Now we can lift the stand off the bench, then mark and saw off the front legs flush with the top edge of the upper box. I'll use a chisel to bevel the edges of that leg to remove any remaining splinters. Now we can start work on the chalkboard. First we'll need two horizontal rails to support the chalkboard. We'll measure, mark, cut and fit these rails using our usual methods. I'll use this smooth MDF board to make the chalkboards. I'm going to make a frame for the chalkboard from this piece of pallet wood. I'll mark and saw the parts in the usual way. Next I'm going to use my father's old USSR plane to smooth these parts. Its blades ground to a curve which works well in this knotty wood. I've planed one face and one edge of each of these frame pieces. The rough face will be glued to the MDF board, and this second edge will be planed in the next step. As you can see, the boards are different heights. We'll fix this by clamping them together, then planing the whole set at the same time. Now we can mark and cut the mitre joints on the frame ends. Once all the frame parts have been cut, I'll use some temporary nails to hold them in position while we glue them. I'll apply the glue and nail down each piece in turn. Then I'll use four clamps to hold everything firmly together while the glue dries. Now we can put some masking tape around the frame and paint the MDF board with the special chalkboard paint. Once the paint's dried, we can peel off the masking tape. Next, we need to make some brackets to hang the chalkboard. I'll start by marking the bracket locations. Now we can make the brackets from coat hanger wire. First make a V-shape with 50mm long legs. Now use your pliers to bend the ends into small loops. Hold the bracket against your ruler like this, then mark the screw locations with a pencil. Now drill the holes and attach the bracket with screws. Next we can fit two screws to the display unit, and finally we can hang the chalkboard. So that's how you build a market display stand. Now all we need to do is deliver them to the client in Kuma. When we arrived at the railway station I thought we'd gone back in time, but it was just a meeting of a vintage car club.
I'd used plenty of rope, so both displays were still where we'd put them. I also fitted small wheels to the legs to make them easier to move around on smooth surfaces. Next we moved on to the ceremonial first writing on the chalkboards. Sadly, we won't know the answer to that question unless you vote in the comments below. I was very happy to make the displays for Kuma Monaro Railway, and they rewarded me with a 30 kilogram bucket of 100 year old dog spikes. I took the spikes to my friend Chris at Scale Tail Fabrication, but that's a story for another time. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.